Hey guys, in this video I'll be talking about correction layers and how you can use them to get some really unique effects or just using them to make your process easier. Then I'll be showing you how to get this glow effect. So a correction layer is a layer that adjusts the colors and tones like brightness and shadows of all the layers below it. To create one, you can go to layer, new correction layer and choose any of the layers or you can just right click in the layers panel. You can change the layer modes just like any other layer and also stack them for unique effects. You can also clip the correction layers to any layer you want. If you have the layer in a folder, the effect will only be limited to the specific folder it's placed in. The great thing about these layers is that it's a completely separate layer, so you can always go back and adjust the settings whenever you want. So there are a total of 9 correction layers that you can use. Five of them, as I like to consider, are the basic essential layers and the other four are the fancy ones where you can get all sorts of fun effects. Brightness contrast filter just adjusts the brightness and contrast of the image, as simple as that. Hue saturation luminosity adjusts the color and vividness of the image so the hue adjusts the colors in the painting saturation is to make the colors look more vivid by intensifying the color or desaturating it by removing all the color moving the slider all the way to the left will desaturate the image making it a grayscale image Luminosity just lightens or darkens everything by adding white or black to the image. Level correction lets you adjust the overall values like the highlights and shadows. This arrow controls the shadows, this controls the midtones, and this controls the highlights. And this bar changes the overall brightness of your image. You can also adjust individual RGB channels the same way. So you just need to try it out and experiment with everything and hopefully you'll just get the hang of it pretty easily. Tone curves is like level correction but it's a bit more advanced. You can add multiple points and adjust them. 255 on the Y axis is the brightest or white point and 255 on the X axis is the darkest or black point. As you can see, Pulling the midpoint towards the white point makes it brighter and pulling towards the black point makes it darker. And just like levels, you can adjust the individual RGB layers as well. With color balance, you can play with the look and feel of your image by adjusting individual colors. You can change the colors of the shadows, midtones, and highlights individually. Like for example, if your painting looked more on the cool side, you could make it warm by adding more red to it. Or if you want the highlights to be more green, just select the highlight option and move the slider towards green. Posterization is like a filter that limits your colors from 2 to 20. This really gives you some very fun effects if you play around with it or use it in specific areas by masking off along with the layer modes. 
Reverse gradient just inverts the colors according to the color wheel. It's sort of like how a negative in photography looks like. So the black turns into white and red turns into green and so on. This is just a very simple filter which you can use for any unique effect. Binarization just converts your image into a black and white duotone image and you can adjust the intensity to however you like and just experiment. And lastly, we have gradient maps, which is really, really interesting. With gradient maps, you can apply a custom color gradient to the gradient of the values in your image that's supposed to be the black and white values in your image. This is a really cool feature that you can use in various different ways like for applying skin tones or just for an overall finishing effect for your painting. Obviously, combining it with different layer modes gives you some really fun effects as well. So ultimately, it's upon you as to how you use these correction layers to get your desired effects or how you just use it to fast track your digital painting process. Next, I'll show you how you can use these correction layers to help you get this glow effect. So this is my image that I drew traditionally and took a picture with my phone. To make something look like it's glowing, you need the surroundings to be dark enough so that the colors that you use will look like it's a light that's glowing in the dark. So to get started, I first used a level correction and this is a really important step for this technique. To get that dimly lit surrounding effect, I moved the highlights arrow at the right all the way to the left which removes all the bright areas from my image. Then I fine-tune the values using these little arrows to what I feel is good for now. Next I used the brightness contrast layer to brighten my image and increased the contrast to make the lines look more dark and crisp. Create a new layer and change the layer mode to glow dodge as it brightens all the colors I use while also not brightly painting over my line work. Next I pick a bright vivid green and using a soft airbrush I paint over the areas I want to look like they're glowing. I'm just building up the color as I'm going to intensify the effect. And I also kept my brush at a very low opacity so it's not an intense effect when I'm painting. I just add this soft glow around the eyes and the pot for that glowy surrounding effect. Since I wasn't happy with the initial color, I used the hue saturation luminosity layer to change the color and saturation of my color. I clipped it to the layer below 
so it only affects to my color layer. You can go back and forth between the correction layers to adjust everything like how I'm doing to make the image more dark or to intensify the glow or just experiment with everything till you're happy. You can use this glow technique just like how I did or in any different style you want but the base technique of darkening the image and using bright vivid colors remains the same. So just experiment with everything and use different brushes and try out different things for some really cool effects. So yeah, I hope you like this video and I hope this helped you in your digital art journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye bye!